Hi guys, welcome to the live. Um, let me just add in our guest speaker. There's if you can request to join. Amazing. There you are. Hi guys, welcome to the live. There we go. We are live, then. I'm trying to get my angle at my angle. <laughs> Did you say I was the guest? What? I'm not the guest, I'm the host. No, yeah, yeah I was letting you log in. <laughs> I feel like you're going to put me in more places. I'm the host. You are the... um. You are you are my guest. You're my link. No, I'm joking. <laughs> you are the host. You are the host. I feel like you're gonna put me through my paces. I've been looking forward to this one. <laughs> I'll thank you. Up. Wow, wow, wow. Um a warm welcome everyone. I'm just gonna allow everyone to just quickly jump on. So today we're here to hear from the main lady herself, the Queen Bee, um, Bryony Bender. Um, some of you may or may not know, I've been doing a series of, of interviews over the last um, few weeks and um, they've been going quite well and it's an opportunity to get a bit of an insight into some of the people that we have in our organisation and it's also a good way of people finding out um, what people have been up to. So today I have Bryony Bender, um, aka Queen Bee, the Harmonics Queen Bee. Um, amazing trader, excellent leader, soon to be a Chairman 10. Guys, if you know what it means to be a Chairman 10, just write 10 in the chat box, guys. Just write the number 10 in the chat box if you know what that means to be a Chairman 10. And if you if you can't wait for Bryony to hit that rank, I want you to put some fire in the chat box. Look at that smile on her face. Just the thought of hitting... Chairman. It's true. It's so happy. <laughs> it's true. Wow, wow, wow. So let me just start off by uh, how how have you been, Bunny? Hold um, up, how have you going for you? Yeah, it's been all right. Um, today I've finally been back on my feet. So probably some of my followers know that I actually fell over and done my ankle. So today's been a good day. I can walk finally. Good pressure. So. Yeah, it's been all right. Keeping busy. Um, luckily for us, we've got the academy and everything to keep us busy. So, yeah, lockdown's going very well. Amazing, amazing, amazing. What was your first reaction when you heard that we were going into another national lockdown? Um, mixed feelings, because I do like to keep busy. I do like to get out. Um, so, of course, you've got that aspect of it. But, again, I was I was excited because last lockdown, we impacted many, many lives. I mean... Just, just from the industry a lot, like just from our organisation alone, like we close to tripled our amount of clients, and and f just just being able to impact and see some of their journeys now, and how excited they are to go into a, a, into this lockdown, really, really changes your whole perception on things because the first lockdown, everybody was running around like headless chickens, no one knew, but it's like a lot of our people in our academy, they're rubbing their hands together because they've got time to focus on what they want to focus on, so. When I heard it, it was mixed, obviously, per, um, selfish reasons. I like to get at, but then um, unselfish reasons. I know that development, a lot of people in our academy can have through lockdown. Amazing. It's a really good attitude to have. It's just just a mindset thing, isn't it? Mm hmm Wow. So, um, you know, obviously, this is an Instagram live, so it's a bit of a different dynamic to the ones we've been doing on Facebook. So on this call, you're going to have people that, that know both of us because it, I think it... it it goes out to both of our contacts, right? So yeah. let's let's start off by talking about how how we know each other, um, okay. how we how we came into contact. So um, we both worked 
at a school on the Isle of Dogs called George Green's Secondary School. I've just got a message that my sound is not great. Is my sound okay? Um, it is now. I can, I can hear it clearer now. At the beginning. I'm using my phone. Uh, if, it, if it goes again, let me know. I will. Yeah. Um, we, we, we both worked at a school um, on the Isle of Dogs called George Green Secondary School. So um, I worked there just before you. I think it was a couple of years before you joined, right? Yeah, um, about two years, I think. About two years, okay. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's about right. So I, yeah, I joined around yeah, 2012. Um, yeah, and I joined, I joined 2014. Brilliant. Um, I joined as a, um, as, a, as, a, as a school leader, as a, what was my title? I can't remember what the title was now. Um, learning, learning leader, learning manager or something like that. Uh, responsible for taking the year sevens right through to to year eleven, um, you know, I love school teaching and I love I love working with young people. I love being a school leader. Um, you know, I've been an assistant head before. Incredible, incredible, incredible. Um, and I remember when so I remember when when you joined the school. <laughs> as, so when Brandy joined the school, I was just turning thirty three. <laughs> and you know, I, I became obsessed. I became obsessed with um, turning thirty-three because it's this. It was it's the same age that Jesus was um, just before um, he died. So you know, we, a lot of people call it the Jesus age. So I decided to throw a big party. Now I'm talking about guys. I'm I talking was about, coming. <laughs> it, this was the biggest. This was the biggest party that the Isle of Dog had ever seen. You know, and. So what I did was I um I I actually hired a, a massive penthouse, um, in Canary Wharf, and you know I invited all of the cool people from <laughs> <laughs> all of the cool people from the school, um, and unfortunately you know Brianie just never made the cut, you know she wasn't <laughs> she wasn't she wasn't quite up you know I did I did like a VIP list of people for this party and like anyone who was anyone you know you know made the list. A lot of people didn't make the cut, but Brandy never made the cut. <laughs> and I remember she. <laughs> no, it's true. You never, you, you never made the cut. <laughs> <laughs> I'd only just started that month, guys. Of yeah, to be, to be fair, there were people who just started who who made Are the cut. <laughs> <laughs> there was someone that started that week that that made the cut. So I don't, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know um, if that if that if that um you know if that can wash. But um, no, I it's, true, just, it's true. I'm, you didn't invite me, and and. That's Ooh, how we I didn't met. invite you. Really invited? No, no, you didn't invite me. Yeah? And that that's how how we actually got talking. Because true East London style, when we was at another party, I went. I remember we we uh, got introduced, and I started speaking to you. And I said, "Oh yeah, you're that fella that didn't invite me to your party." <laughs> and yeah. then we started talking, and then that was it. I pulled you up on it. I was like, "Why well, out of everybody did I get invited?" And then that was how we started talking, and we become friends. Look, I mean. Needless to say, it, it the party went down in in folklore. You know, yes, to, to this day, people still talk about that party. It was, <laughs> yeah, <I bet> they did. <laughs> it was it was a very 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 good party. But yeah, no, you 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 um, you did. You pulled me up on it and you said, "Look, I'm 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 very upset." You know that I wasn't invited to the party, and I and I did say to you, "Look, it, it was just for the cool for the cool team, like for the cool members of stuff." I did say it was. No, I feel but, like you're twisting this story. <laughs> no, I did, I did say that to you. I said that to you and Paula. I said to you and Paula, "Look, it, 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 you know, unfortunately, you didn't make the cut. Um, you took it as a joke, but I was actually being deadly. I was straight faced wow. when I said it. But you thought I was just, you know, doing banter. Um, and that's kind of like how our re relationship and our friendship kind of grew from there." But what I remember about you was um, you always had this thing about you had a degree. You know, you had a degree. And because you were, um, what, was, what was the role that you had when you joined? Um, when I first joined, I was just admin. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you joined as admin. Um, for your, I think you took over from your cousin, right? <laughs> You've always said this. Because <laughs> um, I had family working at the school, there's... Des is convinced that they got me my job. <laughs> so that, that's a little thing between me and Des. But yeah, oh, my... you're not, oh, you're not, do you not, were you not doing Zoe's role? No, no. Yeah, that's a genuine mistake. <laughs> um, but what I remember was that because you was doing, um, you was doing an admin role, you always felt, you always felt like you should be doing more because you had a degree and mm. that you should, you know, that you could, you, you should be doing more with your degree. And I remember that kind of always kind of stood out. Yeah. Um, 
and I, and what I also remember about the time that we worked together was, was your frustration. You were quite mm -hmm. frustrated. I always got the sense. I always got the sense that you were you were not happy and that you were frustrated and that you wanted more. Maybe you can elaborate a little bit on that. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, starting at George Green's was never my my journey i mean i literally did it for money because i've been made redundant from my other job so it was literally meant to be like a stopgap the job come up literally went for it and got it um but as you know you get comfortable there's a slight echo there um as you know you get comfortable with places so it's like i i was at the admin i ended up staying there for a couple of years trained in different admin departments um and i was frustrated I mean, like, it, it, it was hard because the society don't teach you that. They don't teach you to do, like, I was the first person in my family to ever go to university. So that was quite a proud thing for me, me and my family. And it was like, I've done that. I've come out of uni, been unemployed. Like, I'm not ashamed to say I was actually unemployed when I left uni. Um, then I fell in and out of jobs. And I was lucky, lucky my uncle gave me a job on the London Underground. So, I, again, I was in the offices um and then i got made redundant and went to george green so it wasn't it was always a bit of frustration because i didn't spend three years get myself in uni debt to kind of do that um but then as you know um a head of year role come up um about three years into my journey at george greens and i and it was you and a couple of other people my aunt at the, my aunt because she was a head of year at the time and i remember you two coached me for the interview and i and i got the head of year role and for me, that was probably the happiest I was at George Green's because for how young I was at the time, I was early 20s, to have a head of year role, to be in charge of pastoral care for like 200 students was quite a big deal for me. And I knew that the kind of that was the ceiling I was going to get to. And then, of course, they made that role redundant. So, again, that's when the frustration kicked in again. Yeah. What, what I remember about you in that, in that role or how you had a really nice relationship with the, with the kids, um, I think because you were quite young at the time and also you live you live on the island so guys for those of you that don't know the isle of dogs is is near canary wolf it, it's like an extension of canary wolf and the people that reside on the isle of dogs they genuinely believe that they live on an island like it, i find it so weird so when i came to this school the people were talking about islanders and like oh yeah this happens on the island oh oh this person hasn't has never left the island or i'll try and take the kids somewhere and they'll be like are you leaving the island? And it's like this thing, island, island. I, it was like watching Lost. Who remembers Lost? Um, <laughs> honestly, I felt like I was on Lost. It was, it was, you know, I can see Amanda on the call is on an island. Pete, no, guys, I'm not exaggerating. These guys genuinely believe that on an island. Like, there were times when I, like, I'm thinking, do I need to get a boat to go home? Like, what, what, like, do I need a passport? It's crazy. It's literally, so you know when you watch EastEnders? And you see the river, and then it dips all the way down and comes back up. That's the Isle of Dogs, the bit that dips down. The Isle of Dogs. R rumor, rumor has it that um, Henry VIII used to walk, walk, walk his dogs. Um, I taught history for one year at the George Green School. <laughs> I got that, got that he used to walk his dogs um, on, on, the, on, the, um, on the island, and that's how it got, got, got its name. But that's quite anecdotal. I'm not, I'm not sure if that's actually um, a fact. But it's just this whole concept of the islanders, the island. You know, we live on an island. It's like, guys, <laughs> Poplar's just there, you know? <laughs> it's crazy. But I, I went off track a little bit there. But I think because you lived on the island, you were, you were an islander. So islanders always got, like, you know, special treatment. You always had a nice relationship with the kids because you was yeah, an yeah. islander. Um, and, yeah, I, that's what I remember about you, that you, you just had a really nice relationship with, 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 the, with, with, with the kids. Yeah, I think I think yeah, probably yeah, you're hundred percent right. And I think as well, like looking at the way that you you was with with students, um, it's a kind of it's a different caliber because we, we same with you. Like you've always given even your colleagues, even into the academy, down to the children um, at school, everybody that is surrounded by you. You're very big on choices, like at, like not telling people what to do, but give them a choice. And I think from that as well, you, you got a lot of respect around the school from students. And for me, I knew it's like, I hate, you know that, I hate being told what to do. Like, I hate it. So me telling another kid what to do, I knew wouldn't go down well. So it's kind of just, just knowing kind of where their buttons was pressed and kind of trying to relate to them, I suppose. 
No, absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, I had my fair share of frustrations as well at the school. Um, mm-hmm. From like, from for me, it was it was it was it was difficult because I worked in two schools and it was the story of two schools. So my first school was Warren Comprehensive School in in um, in Romford in Chadwell Heath, and at that school, like I was I was loved by the staff. You know, they were like, you know, they championed me. They they made me an assistant head very quickly. I was like, you know, the 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 darling of the school and of the area, and it was great. And whenever there was opportunities, they always championed me for it. And when I got to Jules Greens, you know, I, I, it was like a different sort of vibe. So I, I, I didn't have that kind of, you know, I always felt like I wasn't really being pushed or stretched or, you know, yeah. it got to a point where I felt like I'd hit a glass ceiling. Like I hit this glass ceiling where I couldn't, I, I could see what was above me, but it didn't really, I didn't really feel like I was being pushed in that way. And there were two kind of standout moments for me towards the end of my time at Jules Greens School. Um, the, fir- the first was when, so my my initial role was taking the year sevens that you, you knew you know that you knew that year group really well taking them right through from from end of year seven right through to year eleven and pretty much you know it was a tough job in terms of getting them their grades because their prior attainment was low it was really really hard so to get them to make the required progress was tough and yeah. we put in loads of stuff loads of interventions lots of mindset stuff that worked to treat. And when they did do their GCSEs in 2016, as you well know, they smashed the borough record. You know? it, was the, it was the best results that the, the school had had in years. The school went from being bottom of the league table to like near the top. And it had never happened before. And it was a real happy time for the students, for the school. Anyone that lives on the Isle of Dogs, you probably remember the massive banner that was outside the school. That on the gate, yeah. Best results ever. You know, it was very clear. So there I was thinking, wow, you know, SLT are going to be loving me. You know, I came back from my summer holidays. I went, I went to Canada that year. I came back and I was like, like, it's, it's going to be a case of like, what promotion do you want? Like, do you want, like, what promotion do you want? So I came back and I never really felt like I was, you know, really kind of acknowledged for, for, you know, my role in that. And it was a team. It was absolutely a, a team effort, you know, but. Of course, you know, you're, as being human, you want some sort of recognition and, and it just didn't come. And then when a role came up that was an advancement in my career, I felt quite overlooked for that. I felt quite yeah. overlooked for that role. I felt like I should have been given a shot. I felt like I should have been given like the, like the good old wink and a gun that I felt my colleagues got. You know, my colleagues got that yeah, wink definitely. and a gun. You know, like you should definitely apply for this. But I never really got that kind of encouragement. So... You know, that kind of was a bit frustrating for me because I felt like I, I'd, I'd worked hard enough to at least get a shot at that, that particular role. Um, I don't know if, if, if what if, can people relate to that kind of um, frustration. Just put a number two in the chat box. If you've ever been in a situation like that where you feel a bit overlooked or you feel like you've hit a bit of a glass ceiling, you know, I just, I just felt like the upper echelons of the school weren't really interested in, no. in, in, in me advancing. And you know, know the killer moment? There was, there, was, there was one killer moment in particular that I remember. And maybe, and, and maybe this was probably where I, this was probably where um, I kind of maybe shot myself in the foot. Because towards the end of, of my time at the school, I'd become a little bit entrepreneurial. I'd become a little bit entrepreneurial. So as you well know, I, you know, at this point, I had the nurseries. I had, I had, I had I set up some children's daycare nurseries. Mm-hmm. And I also um, started doing mortgages as well. So I remember being in a personal development um, meeting, um, these things that we have annually. And I remember my, my land manager saying, what did she say? I think I said something like, oh, she'd finished the whole, she'd finished the whole meeting. And I thought, oh my God, like she's not even going to mention about you know, the, the job. So I said, oh, I see that, um, you know, that, that position it's been has been advertised, you know, thinking that she's gonna talk about it, maybe give me some pointers. And she just turned around and said, she just turned around and said, and I remember her exact words, she said, Oh, but you already have loads of businesses, don't you? And I was yeah. like, Oh wow, okay. Oh, okay, right, wow. So it was like this, so what I picked up that it was a perception that because I was a little bit entrepreneurial, then F you, you don't you don't need to yeah. you don't need to have it, it it definitely was a kind of uh 
if your face fits kind of see i've never been in another school and you've come from an environment where you've been in another school where you was treated lovely and then into that school we've had kind of similar frustrations and and again i'm not slagging off anybody at the school um but yeah we both had similar frustrations where we couldn't go beyond what we wanted to go and there was uh, and it was hard to see certain people be propped up the ladder um and yeah it was it was a case of if your face fits and and i don't think that's fair because in our industry there is no face that fits any person from any walk of life can excel in our industry and that's what i love because there's a there's a level playing ground whereas in schools there's okay, no okay. level playing ground yeah no you're absolutely right absolutely absolutely um so there we are get you know get, getting towards the end, end end of our careers and then um i remember you then saying that you wanted to get into finance as well because mm -hmm. i got into finance i i done my so what happened was when my talking to the devil when my when my so 2015 just before the, the year that the the, the GCSE results happened, uh, my, my daughter was born. And when she was born, my my why changed massively. My why, when, when my daughter was born, my why became huge, became absolutely. Come here, babe. Come, come in. Come, come in. Oh, my why. Hello. Hello. Hi, Danny. So, you okay? So, yeah. So, so, so when she so when she was born, I was like, nah, you know what? Because when my when my because when my when my son was born, I was living paycheck to paycheck. I was like living month to month, and it felt like I f I genuinely felt like I'd let him down. Like I I wasn't really able to give him the life that he that he really wanted. So when I found out that we was having Danny, I was like, okay, right, I've got to step up. I've mm. got to really create like something now. Like yeah, it's not tried. a joke. Yeah, I felt. Yeah, yeah I, I just felt like it weren't a joke anymore. Like I really needed to. So my my the whole idea was I needed. I wanted to create something that was mine. I wanted to have something that was a that that I could, you know, that could I could have build another income, not live paycheck to paycheck, but also have something to leave them, mm. you know. And that was that was the whole idea. So I I, I looked at so many different things, and then I you know decided to. Um, go down the finance route and I did my so when when she was born she was born in June so then I had my two much I had my two week paternity leave plus my um, six week holiday summer holiday that's eight weeks so I used that time to learn as much about finance as possible I did every single finance exam that I could possibly do I did my CMAP I did something else I, I just did it all I just did I had eight weeks and you know what it was? It was sink or swim. It was like, by hook or crook, I'm going to be a qualified finance and mortgage broker by August the 31st, whether I like it or not. I just booked all of my exams at the end of the, at the, end of the summer. And, you know, I passed all the exams and I became a mortgage broker and a finance broker and, and started to embark on that journey. And I remember you saying that you wanted to do something similar as well. Maybe you can tell us a bit about it. So it was, I remember, so it was, so... The December of 2017, I was actually signed off sick from work um, with my anxiety and depression. And I remember you was probably one of the people that was my champion for all of that. Like throughout of George Green's, you was probably one of my champions. Like you deserve better. Like there's people that I hardly ever spoke to would come up to me and go, oh, you've got an economics degree. And I'd, and I'd think you've heard that from Des. Des has obviously told you that one. But it, when I was signed off sick, um, I remember we met, you went, I think, I believe you went Ghana that Christmas and you come back and, and we met up and we exchanged gifts. And I remember we had, a, um, you said to me like, this year you need to make some changes. And I remember like you sat me down, you had quite a, a hard, a hard chat probably as, as a friend to give. Um, and, and you just said like, this is going to be your year. Like you need to make a change. Like otherwise you're just going to carry on at George Green's in your comfort zone. And I remember that day we were sitting there, I ordered my mortgage exams on my credit card. I remember it and I, we, and I started studying it. 
And lo and behold, that was December 2017. And then February 2018 was when this opportunity dropped on our lap. So then I was stuck between of a, after of an evening doing my mortgage exams. I remember I'd stay behind after school. I've still got the notepad in, in my drawer where I'd try and do that and try and do the trading. But it comes to a point probably in the summer where I had to decide what I wanted to go ahead with and, and, and trading trading was the one. So I never quite completed the mortgage, but it was always there. And I did always have you as my champion for that. And, and I believe that that conversation like probably is a very testament point to our story and our journey because I probably would still be at George Green now, still probably would be living a life of, of anxiety and depression and, uh, and, and everything that comes with it in the comfort zone. So yeah, thank you for that chat. And pushing me in that direction and of course because of my my degree and everything it, it was kind of a natural path i always wanted to get into finance so when when i was actually studying um at university i was meant to stay there it was uh, essex campus at colchester but at the time my, my my granddad my first year wasn't too well he actually had skin cancer so i thought no you know what i'm like with my grandparents so i was like no nope, not staying i'm gonna like travel from home and my journey used to be Isla Dogs to Canary Wharf Jubilee, get to Stratford, jump on the overlad to Colchester. Every time I'd come back, I'd look up at one Canada Square and think, one day I'm going to work there. One day I'm going to be a person with a briefcase and dressing nice. All right, yeah, now I'll go there and train us. But <laughs> I didn't know that was the vision. But I used to look up and say, one day I'm going to be working in one of these buildings around Canary Wharf. So the finance was kind of natural for me. So when I had like my best friend like you navigate me down that road, it just felt like all crossroads was coming together. So it was a natural step. And then, hey, two months later, this jumps on our laps, which was amazing. Wow, wow, wow. So just to, just to kind of go back a little step as well, um, lots of lots of t lots to unpick there. Um, so we're looking at... Um, 2017 so christmas 2017 so you you are embarking on on that on that mortgage course and um i remember i actually remember that that particular christmas because for me personally i was also kind of looking for an opportunity because all that was doing the finance stuff and actually for the first time in my life i did actually you know start to have some you know disposable income and some nice income but it felt it didn't feel it didn't feel residual or passive. I was still working. Yeah, I was still kind of work. working. I was still exchanging my time for money. It was good money. It was very, very good money, but I was still exchanging my time for money. And I, and I kind of wanted something that would give me my time back. So then fast forward to that February, February 2018, Sunday, I think the 6th or something like that, um, I got sent a video. And the video was a 10-minute video and it was a 10 minute video that just changed my life. And then obviously by extension would change um, your life. Then I'm on a, I'm on a live, keep it quiet, please. Talk to help, please. Yeah. Yeah, February 2018. So, um, I remember when, when, when I decided to sign up to this, because I, mem I remember, and this is going to sound strange, I, this is going to sound so bizarre. When I saw that video and I watched it, I digested it and I genuinely felt like I had found the cure to poverty. I, found, I felt like I'd found the cure to poverty because when you grow up, the way I've grown up, you know, we, we grew up from like, like in the mud, like literally it was like from from nothing we didn't have anything and i'm looking at this thing and i'm thinking wow this could actually be the thing that can create you know fi financial independence and not just for me but for other people as well and immediately i thought of you straight away so like i'd signed up and i was like i've got, I've got to call brian <laughs> because i remember because i remembered your i remembered your i remembered your why i remembered that you wanted to you wanted to you wanted to leave work. You 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 felt like you wanted to you needed a vehicle. You needed a vehicle to and I and I genuinely thought that you would be good at trading. I thought you'd be good at online trading. I thought yeah. I could I could imagine you I, I I visualized you like learning and training and all of the stuff that you're kinda of doing now. I'd already kind of seen like it was like a flash forward. 
Mm. And I just thought, no, I've got to call, I've got to call you, I've got to tell you about this. And I remember calling you, and I, I, I think I said something along the lines of, look, I found something that I think is going to be amazing for us. Um, obviously, I was new. Like when I say I was new, I just signed up. <laughs> like, literally fresh. <laughs> literally, I just, I literally just got the thing that said join success, right? So I didn't really know. I just, I was probably, I don't know what I said. I probably waffled, and I said, look, you need to jump on this. Because I think it's going to change our lives. I, I can see you being really good at this. Um, it's trading. It's online trading. I think this is going to be the thing that, you know, that, that allows you to leave George Green's. Yeah, I'll just, I'll just say that comment. I was, it was just a buzz. It was just that natural buzz. And then you signed up straight away. What, what made you do that? Because that's not normal. Uh, two things. I think... Um... For me, it was so you'll forget, like, um, so for background for people on the call, um, there's has tried other other business avenues, so the nurseries being one, um, more like the finance, mortgage, and things, and both of them I knew of the journey. So when Des used to tell me about opportunities, he never quite spoke about this one as he did with the others. There was just something different. I mean, it was quite late as well. And, and, and you rung me and you was like adamant that this is something that what we was looking for for 2018. So for harboring from December, New Year's and our toast to saying that this year we're going to crack it, to then giving me this opportunity. There was just something different in your voice. And I think at the time as well, um, as much as we've both grown into this role of mentor, mentee, which we've had to work on, which has been bloody hard. But at the same time, you, you, you was my mentor back then. Do you know what I mean? As much as you as a friend, you were still my mentor. So when you gave me that and you was a champion, and especially where I was going through my mental health at the time, having a champion, as, as what I mean, as like somebody that's got your back telling you to do something, I knew that you only had my best interests at heart. I'm sorry, but people are making comments in the group that I, I wanted my two and three. Um, guys, I'm going to address that directly because... Um... <laughs> <laughs> he didn't have me two and three because I left. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm not, no, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. You know, of course, you know, two and three is in the back of my mind, but the overwhelming feeling is one of impact, you know. I genuinely, I genuinely, genuinely knew... And you helped me go two and three. You did, you did. That, that was part of the thing um, when I joined. You said that um, yeah, you're going to help I... me go to the free. And you did. Hence Travis. Did. Yeah, yeah, I did. Travis. I did. I did. <laughs> so I, I'm, I've got a bone to pick with you, though, because imagine, guys, I want, you, I want you to imagine I signed someone in one minute. So I'm thinking to myself, I could go chairman <laughs> in a day. <laughs> This is easy. This is too easy. I'm, this is like, this is like taking candy from a baby, right? So I'm like, this, like, everyone's just going to say yes. So you really set me up to fail. I'm really upset with you. <laughs> Not everyone trusts you like I did, I suppose. <laughs> um, but no, you, yeah, you're right. We did think it was going to be a lot easier than what we thought, but... Yeah, it was weird. Then I left a couple of about a week later, didn't I? So I signed you up. Then I signed my my brother-in-law up. So I I did actually get my two and three, um, on the same day. I got my two and three, and I chilled. After I got my two and three, I I didn't do any building whatsoever for months. But what happened, guys, was that what closed me for the business was a product called Fusion Trade. It was an old trade. It was an old product that traded for you. It was like a lazy man's way of trading, and I thought I was too busy to learn how to trade we get that a lot we get a lot of people say you know there are a lot of people who there are a lot of people who have started 2021 and they have 2021 goals and they're looking for an opportunity and this opportunity that we have right here genuinely can change your whole life and allow you to create financial independence but people feel like they're too busy that it, they don't have time for this and i completely relate to that misconception because I believed I was too busy. And when I am got rid of this product, because it did it all for you, it, it literally, you didn't have to do anything. You just put your money in and it done it for you. When they got rid of the product, because they're all about education, we kind of like had a bit of a wobble, didn't we? No, 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 no. You had a wobble 
And then you passed the wobble on to me. And then I was like, right, I'm out of here. So I was gone. Because Not actually, yet. guys, I was within my refund. So I'd done it so I could get my refund. Um, but Des waited. And then we ended up yeah, coming back. Yeah, you're right. So what happened was I had the wobble because I had the wobble because I'm like, I'm too busy. I don't have yeah. time to, you know. So I had the wobble. So I was like, Brianny, you know, I didn't want you to leave. I was only really telling you out of respect. Because imagine I've signed you up to this thing. If I leave, you're going to be like, where you go. So I was just like, Brianny, look, I'm gone. But you go for it. Like, I've got full confidence in you being an... Am I actually didn't want you to leave. I just wanted... I just, I just wanted to leave quietly. And then you just carry... And you'd carry the torch. You carry the torch. <laughs> you carry the torch for both of us, right? So I was just letting you know, look, I'm, I'm out of it. I'm out of it. But then you went and fasted yourself up and actually left. <laughs> I got so my back money then, back quicker. <laughs> I, I, so I looked, my, I looked in my back office and Brandy was greyed out. She was grey. Oh. She was grey, right? Back then it used to go grey when people were there. And then I had the same conversation. I'm just doing this out of respect, guys. Like, I'm not just leaving. I'm letting you know, look, I'm gone, but you guys crack on. So then I called Leonard and I said, Leonard, and then Leonard was grey. So now they're, they're both grey. Right? So my two and three is gone. And then that's when my, my um, old upline called and he was like, hey, bro, don't go. And I'm, like, what do you mean? I'm like, what? how do you even know that I'm about to go? And he goes, I just checked the back office. Bryony's grey. Leonard's grey. <laughs> You're about to go grey. I said, bro, it's not for me. I said, it's not for me. I, I'm, you know, I'm busy. I don't have time. Guys, bearing in mind, anyone listen to this, bearing in mind that I've become a multi six-figure income earner from this. Last year, you know, <laughs> I had an incredible, incredible year. Let's just say that. But going back to this moment, I'm about to, guys, I'm about to leave this opportunity that's changed my whole life and impacted my family's life immensely. I'm about to leave. And he was like, look, he said, look, don't leave. There, there's a product that we've got. There's a product in this academy that allows you to just copy and paste. You can copy experts, you know? Yes, the Fusion Trader did it for you, but you, if, if you know how to copy and paste, then you can trade. Just copy and paste. That's all you've got to do. Just come on board and just copy and paste your way to six figures. Oh, and I think you can go chairman. I think you've got the, I think you've got the um, ingredients, the tools, the minerals. What, I can't remember what, what the phrase he used, but he said, I, 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 he goes, I believe you can become a chairman on this platform. So don't leave. And he gave me a game plan. I said, okay, no problem. So I called Brian and said, Brian, we're, <laughs> we're, back. Back. <laughs> we're back in business. We're back in, we're back in business. <laughs> Leonard, we're back in business. Leonard didn't come back. Leonard never came back. But, you know, at least you came back. So we we're, were back. And then and that was the start. That was the start of it. Then we we, we kind of got serious. So what happened next, guys, was that um I I you know we, we then decided to um make a power move. We made a power move and we decided to get an office in Canary Wolf, but not the one we have now. It was a, it was a, a lesser office, it was in South Key. We got an office and, and it wasn't easy because truth be told, I, we couldn't really afford it, could we? No. We couldn't and really afford it. And we had to be obviously careful because we knew what the school was being like as well. So it was like we couldn't advertise as much. We couldn't afford it. So it was kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place. So the, the thing, so this was this was this was this was my thing, right? After after deciding to come back, I thought, you know what? I, I started to see some success from the copying and pasting, and um, I decided to kind of like go. At this point, I decided that you know what? if we're going to do it, let's do it properly. So. What we what 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 I did was I decided to walk as if I decided to act as if I decided to become the person that I wanted to be. I I, I wanted to become a chairman, so it's like I'm gonna just become a chairman. Like it's it's like it's like a decision. It's like a switch. I'm just gonna become the person that I that I see myself being in the future, and as part of that plan. We wanted to attract a particular type of audience. We wanted to really go after um, professional people, people. We wanted to create a vibe of this is a serious thing. This is not a joke, yeah. you know, because there were people in our industry making 
six figures building their business from coffee shops. You know, Shabazz yes. Ahmed, Chairman 100, amazing guy, built his business in, 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 in prep in, in, in Westfield. Amazing. But we were, yeah. like, we were like, why don't we try to do something different? Why don't we yeah, try we and create kind of an energy? Flip. I believe we was the first. We was the first in the UK to actually have a office ba office base as well. In in our industry, I believe we was the first in the UK to actually achieve that. Right. And it's not something that's necessary because it's not duplicatable, but it's just something that we felt that we that we that we wanted to do. Just and I think it gave us a bit of a focus as well. Yeah. Because then we had this. Because then we had this place that we could go to, that we could work from, that we could game plan from that we could invite people to, that we could do training, that we could do events. And we just had this base. Um, and we just wanted people to know that this, this isn't a joke. This, this is serious. And I think that's why, that's why we did it. But truth be told, it, it wasn't cheap, guys. <laughs> it wasn't cheap, you know. Like, you know, um, I, I, obviously I took on like the, the lion's share of the cost. But if it wasn't for Bryony, um and Travis, you know, contributing to those costs, it wouldn't have happened. It just definitely wouldn't have happened. And then when we moved to One Canada, when we, when we moved to One Canada Square, the costs went through the roof. Guys, One Canada Square, Canary Wharf, is not a cheap address, mm. especially the way we wanted to do it with having a, with having a, a, with having a um, training facility and not just not just an office, it's all the training spaces and access to, access to the lounge and all of this stuff, even like the teas and coffee, the whole kit and caboodle, so expect well, when they when when we went for the meeting and they said the price. <laughs> oh man, guys, we we like I, I have to go to guys, truth be told, I've never said I've never said this to anyone before. I don't even know if you know Brandy. I literally had to go to my uncle to get a loan. I went to my uncle because yeah. we had to pay a month house. in advance. Yeah, because we had to pay a month in advance and and the deposit. Mm -hmm. You know, it was it was tough. So I literally went to my uncle and I was like, uncle, you're going to have to, you're going to have to, you're going to have to come through because, because I fell in love with the place. I don't know about yeah, you. We when, did. We, when we went for that meeting, I was just when like, we got in the lift. This, yeah, we got in the lift and we're like, and we're trying to, we were trying to act like it was normal. Like, yeah, we see, we, we have offices that, yeah, this is, what, I remember walking Canada? over the bridge to the viewing. Yeah. I remember it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're trying to act calm, like it was nothing. Like, yeah, one Canada, no problem. We, we, eat these, we eat these buildings for breakfast. But inside, we're like, oh my God, this is like amazing. This is cool. But it just, it, I, I think we left there and I think the three of us, we just said, we have to make this work. Yeah. We have to, we have to make this work. I was just too excited. I was like, I can't wait to bring the team here. We have to make it work. We couldn't let that opportunity go. Couldn't let it go. Couldn't let it go because it was just, even getting us at that time, getting a spot was hard. The guy said it was a cancellation or something like that. It, it just was. came up. It was like everything just aligned itself. And like, I don't know. I don't even know if you know, Brandy, but there were days I used to get in a lift at One Canada and I didn't know how we were going to make the next month. If I'm being yeah. honest. Like, no, I we didn't, didn't know how we were going to make the next Because it's so expensive and we weren't there yet. We were just kind of like, just hoping on, just on a wing and a prayer that we could make it month to month because back then I'm like a, I'm platinum 2k I'm platinum yeah, 2k I was P600 your P600 like both left our full time no, no, jobs no one's making chairman money there's no chairman money you know mm -hmm. it's like it, it's tough it, it's, it's, it was really in the early days it was hard when that invoice came every month it was so tough but I knew that we just had to be there we just had to be there 100%. It, it was it, it was a very it was a character building um experience for both of us I think. Um I feel like it it kind of solidified the friendship, it solidified the working relationship. Um but it really was tough. I mean, the first Christmas of leaving my job, I remember you drawing I I, I made a, one a trade and I made 40 pounds and I remember you drawing it out for me just so I had a bit of money over the Christmas break. Um so it's just like I don't think people people see us at the level that we're at now, but they don't see the struggles that we went, especially for that first year of trying to make it work. And we had a lot of people doubting us as well, so um, we had a lot of people to prove wrong. Like when we first started, and we was doing that fusion trade, and we'd be be in work, and we'd be, have the odd conversation about trades. There was other colleagues that would would mock it, but now, now like 
it's, it's mockable because look at where you are, look at where I am, and I can start with a smile on my face without <laughs> obviously being horrible to them. But it's true, like we put in a lot of work and, we, and, we've, and we've got there, and, I, and I'm really proud of that. I really am proud of that. And I've got to give obviously a big shout out to Trav because he's a very big testament to that story. Wow. So I want to put things into context because I don't want to make everything seem all sweetness and light. You know, you're doing, you know, you're doing very well. You are, you know, an amazing trader, an amazing trainer. You've got a huge team that you manage. Um, you know, your team love you. You are, you know, <laughs> your, your, your life's changed from this opportunity. But the best thing about you is that you're a great teacher and you can teach other people to do what you do as well. You're about to hit Chairman 10, making 10,000 a month passively residually shall i say residual income ten thousand a month about to hit that rank incredible you know and you know i'm doing you know what, what i'm doing which is great but question i really want to ask you is what, what have been some of the challenges along the way like i don't want ever, i don't want anyone on this call to just think that yeah you know these guys are making all this money and they're living the high life and traveling around the world now i want to know about the, the challenges as well what are some of the what have been some of the the challenges on this journey um I think lo losing people around you was probably a, a challenge for me because um, me and you starting a business outside of the school, I think, was frowned upon by many people. So so lo losing kind of friendships and, 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 and your support network. And, and of course, like, people do the famous thing, oh, it's a scam. And you just, like, now I can laugh at it. But at the time, it hurts, guys. Like, it hurts when people, like, would I generally risk all of this for a scam? And it's just like, that That was one of the obstacles, like, kind of losing people around me uh, for the sake of following my heart and and, and following my um, opportunities. Um, my confidence was an obstacle because I felt like, well, again, at the school, when I tried to better myself, I got knocked down. And tried to better myself and got knocked down. So then you you give me this opportunity of of a, of a new um, opportunity. And at the time, um, to be truly transparent, Des weren't really engaged in the opportunity. So Des was just doing Des, and so I was trying to better myself and go to all of these lectures and go to all of these things. And uh, it was hard. It was hard to do that um, to build my confidence. A whole new industry that I didn't know nothing about. Like the only management experience I've got was literally eight months of being ahead of year managing teenagers which doesn't even compare to it so to put me into this industry with a low confidence to learn something else was really hard um my anxiety and depression uh, again that was that was hard to overcome because this journey come off of the back of of the spell of that um so it's kind of finding myself uh building myself that that was probably the hardest i think probably like the, the the journey that i've been on um which you're of course you're you've you've seen that journey um just just doing things i've to be honest with you des i've never stuck at anything I've, like other than uni and school and that this is the first thing i've probably seen it through and for me that that resilience i'm proud of my resilience i've got to be honest like there's been times where I've not wanted to speak on stage. Like we've been in Ubers where I've absolutely said, there's, I can't talk, I've had tears in my eyes and I've got up on stage and delivered. There's been times where I've had to do a Zoom call where I've been nervous to do a Zoom call and you've been there telling me. For my first ever time speaking on stage, you took me, you took me there, um, like you took me there and helped me. Go, go, go into events, I don't like going to events on my own. And and all of these little things to be in an industry where you're put on a pedal stool is is hard. It's it's very hard because you're on a pedal stool. Everybody's loving you, but if you're not loving yourself, it doesn't mean nothing. So it, it was that journey, and I think I've kind of come for. I'm starting to come full pelt of that full circle of that journey now. Um, lockdown last year really helped that. Really helped that, and obviously that's where I hit ranks. That was where I really dived into myself. Really hit just like just just really getting into it and so anybody that's listening i think my obstacles is just being like trusting yourself going for it having the confidence and just really trying to get to know yourself because once you do that the world's your oyster like there, there's nothing you can't do if you don't put your mind to it and for me my mind was what was holding me back so i had to put a lot of work into that so to rephrase the answer to that question my, my biggest obstacle for me I, I was in my own way 
Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Um, so what are you looking forward to the most? Like going into 2021, what are you, what are you looking forward to? Um, I think the free, the, like obviously the more freedom it's going to bring, like we've obviously got a taster now of the fruit, like the fr um, bearing the fruit, which is, which is nice. We've, hurt, we've worked hard for three years, solid. So I know it's only going to get better and our fruit's starting to blossom now. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, of course, I'm looking forward to hitting Chairman 10. Anytime I mention the word Chairman 10, you mention the word Chairman 10, I can't help but smile. Um, so of course, I'm looking forward to that. Um, only because I know it's going to be a big thing for is me. It, is anyone else speaking. looking forward to um, Brian hitting Chairman 10? Guys, if you're looking forward to Brian Bender hitting Chairman 10, just put a number 10 in the chat box, guys, because honestly, that's going to just make my day. I can't, I can't wait. The, the only thing better than hitting chairman yourself is producing a chairman. I, I, actually, pre pre I actually prefer producing chairman than, than hitting chairman. Hitting chairman was great, of course. I'm happy and grateful. But someone that you know and you know is, is, is one of your best friends, when, when you, you see them hit chairman and you see how hard they've worked for it, that's a much better feeling. Guys, you, 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 you guys are going to see me doing some crazy dance moves. I'm going to be doing some wild dancing. When she, when you don't want to see you dancing, trust me. <laughs> but um, no, it's, um, and I think that's the last point I'm looking forward to, is, is seeing my team accelerate. Because in this industry, you pour into people when you get gratitude. You pour into people when you see their life change in front of you. And it's a beautiful thing. Like, uh, there's such a good buzz around camp at the minute. Like, I, I actually feel a bit selfish that me and my team are loving life at the minute because I know other people out there are not enjoying lockdown. And, and, and it's hard. But, like, I'm looking forward to, to my team hitting ranks. I'm looking forward to them joining me on stage as chairman. And I know it's going to happen. Like, my team, I've got to give a shout out to my team because I know every single one of them are on it. I absolutely love them. Like I've always said, never build a leadership team based on on what rank they are, what where they are. Do it based on the heart and value because these guys are absolutely amazing. Like my team, like guys, if you're on this call, just blow up the chat box because you guys are what put the A in there, mate. Like you guys are amazing, and and I've got to give it back to you guys because I won't be where I am. Des won't be where he is if it wasn't for people like you guys. Wow, wow, wow! I see the A team on the call going crazy absolutely <laughs> phenomenal um so there are going to be people listening to this facebook live they've come into a new year and there are going to be people on this live who are you know looking for something looking for an opportunity looking to do something a bit different what 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 would you what would you say to those people and those people may even be in a bit of a situation so they may have been made redundant they may have been made furloughed um they may be worried about their future. They may not have anything going on right now. What can you offer someone who is really looking to make a change this year? Um, well, first off, I think it's the whole education of, of um, the financial sector that people need to really look into. Because if you're in a situation, then it's because, like myself and Des, you wasn't taught the, um, the financial education that everybody needs. And it is leveraged income and multiple sources of income and and i think if you can learn and grasp those concepts you'll feel a bit easier and open to opportunities so really look into it there's a book that i want to recommend rich dad poor dad by robert kiyosaki that covers all of that jump on one of our calls we cover it too we speak about it on a daily basis where you can look at your situation and how you can improve it and 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 i really want to get that across like if you can grasp that concept of multiple sources of income and leveraged income, you'll be open to opportunities. Yes, our opportunity might not be the one for you, but look for an opportunity. And even if you feel that our opportunity is the vehicle for you, then guys, we're going to welcome you with open arms. But um, for anybody that's watching, I just want to highlight that there's actually a discount happening at the moment, a personal discount from myself. So I've, I've extended it. We, we I had a 10... Um, 10 person mentorship deal where the first people that signed up um via me would get direct mentorship from myself and the discount some of them have gone but what i will do is i will uh restart that and take it back to 10 so uh, as we standed we only had five opportunities of that left 
So I'll take that back to 10, offer it to another 10, 10 people. Um, just direct mentorship for myself or on, on the online um, education. Oh, wow. And, wow, and wow, wow, that, wow, 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 wow. Let me just, let me just slow that right down there because I don't want that to be, you know, <laughs> undervalued whatsoever. So just to take it from the top guys, if you're on this call, and you are coachable, you are committed, and you have £190 to invest in yourself to start this business, and you're not already in the business, if that's you, you have the opportunity to be mentored by Brandy Bender. And let me just unpick that, because I know she doesn't you know, do this often, but to be ment mentorship's powerful. Let me just say that. Mentorship is one of the best tools that we have to achieve our goals. And let me explain why. When you have the right mentor, it's like taking a shortcut to success. Mm -hmm. Success is here. You can take the long, windy road or you can take a shortcut because your mentor can, 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 can show you how to avoid pitfalls, what to do, how to get there quicker. It's giving you, your mentor is giving you a, the roadmap, the blueprint, you know? It's giving you the, your mentor is giving you the recipe and you're being mentored by someone who has the results. Briny Bender has the results. You know, Briny Bender can trade proficiently. She, she trained other people how to trade. Briny Bender is about to hit Chairman 10, currently making 5,000 a month residually before her trading income, residually. You know, every single Friday she gets paid. Guys, if you're my, on this call... My old monthly wage. Your old monthly wage, you get paid weekly. Her old monthly wage, she now gets weekly residually. Guys, on that note, as well as the money that you make from trading, if you decide to embark on the residual side of our business, you get paid every Friday. Every Friday, we get paid. If you're on this call and you're part of our academy and you get paid every single Friday, I want you to just put a, a 777 in the chat box, if you get paid every single Friday from this academy, um, I know you guys are loving life. It's so nice to like end each week with residual income. <laughs> it's very, very beautiful. Um, so you've got someone who is earning 5,000 a month residually. That's about to be doubled. And she's going to show you exactly what she did exactly like literally give you the blueprint and hold your hand so that mentorship is not to be taken lightly it's not to be taken lightly at all um so was it the first five you said no it, there was only five left but i've extended it back to 10 and every 10 of those will get a 30 pound cash back as well so if you slide into her dms you get that mentorship from brandy bender guy i'm telling you now that is so so valuable i see someone put how much you make from trading. So how much you make from trading will vary from person to person. Um, it depends how much time and effort you put into it. There are people who have joined our platform and have been able to replace their income, people that have been able to become six, six figure income earners and so forth. But it all depends on you. It all depends on what you put in, what you put in. It's like going to the gym. You know, you can have the best gym membership in the world. But if you never attend the gym, <laughs> If you only attend, but you don't engage with the program or you don't, you know, use any of the, the, the equipment, then, you know, you're not going to get the results. So it depends heavily, heavily on you. So guys, make sure you slide into it. Guys, if you've got any burning questions for, for Bryony or myself before we go, um, feel free to put them in the chat box. If you've got any, any um, burning questions for either one of us, uh, make it clear who the, who the question is to as well. Um, did some of Definitely. your students? Did some of your students join? The yeah, platform? they're on this call. Yeah, absolutely. Um, lots of my um, students from both my schools are part of. Um, they're not just part of MA Finance Academy. We've got some of my students are leaders, like big leaders, um, on the on on the platform. In fact, if you're on this call now and you're in the platform and you're one of our ex students, just put a free in the chat box. But yeah, there's several, absolutely several. Um, Somebody has said, what is the risk? Um, what is the risk? Well, the risk is there, you know, there, absolutely. With, with anything, you know, especially with things, the, the risk is there. But the best thing about what we do is that we manage the risk. 
So we, we have something called risk management. I go to, into every single trade not really worrying because my risk management is secure. So we, we have such things like a stop loss. So I go into every trade knowing what the worst case scenario is. And that worst case scenario doesn't phase me because I've managed that risk. I also go into every trade with a good risk to reward. With a good risk to reward. So, you know, it's, it's all about the risk management. You know, it's, it's not, it, you know, any entrepreneurial venture is, is um, you know, is, is not free of risk. But the best thing that you can do is, is learn how to manage that risk. But also don't be afraid to take risks. You know, risks, you know, one of the reasons why Bryony is so successful is because she's been able to take risks. So many people live in their comfort zone, afraid to take risks. And, you know, that's what really stops us from really achieving our full potential. And I really want to end on, um, on a certain note. I want to ask some of the, in fact, if, if, you're, if you're on this call and you're not part of the academy, I call you guys new money, new money. You're, you're new money. Just just put a number two in the chat box. If you're on this call, you're not part of the academy and um and you're you're um new. I just see one of my students um typing in the chat box. Hey Abu, how you doing? Hope you're well. We'll talk offline. All good, all good. Um if you're new money on this call, um just put a number two in the chat box. If you're if you're new to this call, you're not part of the academy, just put a number two if you are new money. Wow, wow, wow. Keep those twos coming through, guys. If you are new money on this call, just keep the twos coming through. Because my, my question to you, to you guys is this. Do you know what you want? Do you know what you want? Because often the reason why people don't achieve their financial goals is because they don't really know what they want. What do you want? What are your goals for this year? What do you actually want to achieve this year financially are you clear about your goals what are your financial goals because if you don't have financial goals it's like getting in your car and just driving around with no destination there's nothing in the sat nav you're just driving sounds crazy right but that's what so many of us do we just go do you know what we do i tell you what most people do because i've been there what most of us do is we're just trying to get through every day. Let me just get through today. Let me just get to the end of the week. Let me just get to the end of the month. And then a whole year has gone by and we've not achieved anything. I want you to write down one financial goal that you would like to achieve this year. I want you to write it down and make it very, very clear. I want you to make it time bound. And I want, you to, I want you to celebrate it like it's already happened. I'm so happy and grateful now that I am debt-free by December the 31st. I'm so happy and grateful now that I am a six-figure earner by December the 31st. I'm so happy and grateful now that, and then put a date. And, and do a vision board. It's so powerful. Guys, if you write down your goals or you do a vision board, it makes your goals more effective. It makes your goals more effective. So here's my top tip. Once you've written down your goals or you've done a vision board, I want you to become obsessed. I want you to become obsessed with your goals. Guys, I'm talking about being obsessed. Crazy people make crazy money. Become obsessed with your goals. You see, because thoughts become things. Thoughts become things. With the more you think about something, it leads to action, and an action turns into results. Become obsessed with your goals. You see, my, I'm going to get Bryony to show her vision board in a minute. My first vision board I did before, while I was still a school teacher, it had um, a, a picture of my mum because I wanted to retire her. It had a picture of my kids because I wanted to send them to um, private school. It had a picture of a thousand people because I wanted to impact. It's the teacher in me, right? I wanted to impact um, lives from a, around the world. It had a picture of an alarm clock because I wanted to smash my alarm clock. I, I wanted to wake up when I finished sleeping. And then the last thing it had was a picture 
of the Canary Wolf Tower because I could see it from my classroom. I could see the Canary Wolf Tower from my classroom. Guys, I'm so happy and grateful. Oh, so the last thing it had was um, it had a picture of um, it was like a money bag or something. It was something that represented. I wanted to turn my my annual salary into a monthly salary. That was the last thing. I'm so happy and grateful that every single thing on my vision board has come to pass. Why? Because I was obsessed with my goals. I took action. Guys, where the action takers? Nothing changes unless something changes. Einstein said, nothing happens unless something moves. Show us your vision board, um, Brandon. So this is one that um, I drew myself. And as you can see, like I'm ticking off things. So like hitting my P5K rank, clearing my debt was a big one for me. Um, but that's where I see it every single day. And then on my working desk, I've got, um, in fact, I've got this, which I read to myself um, of a morning. She remembered who she was and the game changed. Just so if I'm, I'm feeling a bit low in, in, in confidence, I look at this before I start work. Um, so th this is powerful. Um, and then, of course, I've got your, your um, Chairman 10 thing right beside my work desk. So that's obviously my new... Oh, that's a nice bag you got there. What? That was a nice, nice little um, touch bag. Oh, yeah. Got, got me a little collection. Um, but, yeah, so that, that's kind of my working desk. But So I've got my goals and everything, and I just kind of tick it off. So that's my working desk, obviously, because we're in lockdown. Um, but, yes, this is, this is the key one. I, I took time to draw this. So just to explain it quickly, um, like I said, they're the things I've ticked off. The, the words are what I read to myself every day, fearless, confident. Um, strong, make sure I smile. My team, we're coming for the number one spot in MA Finance Academy. <laughs> um, this is about what we wanted to achieve, Des, as, as a company. So we've got Canary Wolf, um, of course, Chairman Tens there. Yeah, we, I want a AFA to be number one in the UK. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of goals there. A lot of goals. Wow, wow, wow. So I wonder, I want to match your offer. So for anyone who gets started with you tonight, not only did they get you as a mentor, but I'm also going to give them a £30 um, cashback as well. Okay. A £30 cashback. In fact, they've got, they've got, they can have a choice between either getting a £30 cashback or access to my property course where they can grow a property portfolio. So they can have one, one or the other um, for people that are getting started tonight. So guys, it's all about taking action, guys. Um, if you've come on this call, I don't want you to just feel fired up or feel inspired. I want you to take action. I want you to take action, guys. Action takers are the money makers. So slide in Briny Bender's DMs. Slide in her DMs. And, um, you know, simply say, I'm ready. I'm ready. If, if, you, if you're if you just curious, then slide in her DMs and say, more info. But if you're serious, slide in her, in her DMs and say, I'm ready. Um, wow, wow, wow. Briny, I'm going to give you the last words. Um... I just want to say a big thank you to everybody who jumped on. Um, big thank you to my team for being on and supporting. Um, a big thank you to the whole of MA Finance Academy for being part of mine and Desi's journey. We wouldn't be where we are today if it weren't for every single one of you. So a big thank you to you for helping us achieve our dreams. And my last thing is to anybody that's looking at lockdown, in a negative way, please try and... Um, please try and take care of yourself take care of your mindset um you are you are your thoughts and i still to this day struggle with my mindset but i'm very transparent with it um so if you need help if you need to reach out to anybody do it um my, my inbox again is always open but just really take this time because we have been blessed with time so take the time to better yourself take the time to better your future because nothing changes if nothing changes. But you have to be that change. I struggled to be that change. My mindset wasn't strong enough. But once I embarked on that journey, every day got easier and better. So make that change. Amazing. Guys, my name is Des Ami from the top of Canary Wolf. And we're going to see you at the top because the bottom is far too crowded. We're going to see you at the top, guys. We're going to see you at the top. Thank you, guys. Take care.